The human brain may not look like much, a couple of pounds of pink wrinkled tissue, but the last hundred years of neuroscience have shown that the brain is an incredibly densely wired computer made out of hundreds of billions of individual cells called neurons. Neurons communicate with each other using both chemical and electrical signals. When a neuron is activated by chemical messengers, it produces an electrical pulse that results in similar chemical signals being sent to other neurons to which it is connected. Neurons come in thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of different kinds, each with a unique shape, a distinct molecular composition, and a unique pattern of connections within the brain. For example, these cells, the basket cells, have small input branches and output branches, and they release pulses of chemical that inhibit their targets. Whereas these cells, the pyramidal cells, are large and project long distances, and they excite the cells that they target. If we could figure out the role that each of these cell types plays in the brain, we could understand how they work together to create thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, and how flaws in specific cell types may lead to devastating brain disorders like schizophrenia, Parkinson's, and depression. Now, MIT researchers are working to develop tools that allow us to do exactly that. It is now possible to precisely control the activity of specific neurons and therefore understand how each neuron contributes to brain function. Remarkably, these high-tech tools have come from microorganisms, such as this pond algae called Chlamydomonas. Chlamydomonas needs light for photosynthesis, and it swims toward light with the help of a small organelle called an eye spot. The eye spot contains a light-sensitive protein called channel rhodopsin, which responds to blue light by moving positively charged ions across the eye spot membrane, causing the voltage of the eye spot to change, a bit like a battery being charged by a solar cell. But neurons are also electrical devices, and their voltage would also change if channel rhodopsin could be inserted into their membranes and then illuminated. So, researchers took a piece of DNA that encodes for the channel rhodopsin protein. Then, they put it into neurons using a safe and effective method for delivering a gene, the same kind being used in human gene therapy trials. The neurons expressed the DNA, manufacturing copies of the channel rhodopsin protein and installing them in their membranes. As predicted, the researchers were now able to activate these neurons using light without affecting any of the neighboring neurons. This technique, called optogenetics, allows researchers to drive the activity of specific neuron types to see how they affect brain activity and behavior. For example, researchers can deliver the piece of DNA that encodes for channel rhodopsin into a set of basket cells, shown here in green. Then pulses of blue light activate only the basket cells, while the other cells, for example, the neighboring pyramidal cells are not affected. So if a specific brain disorder is associated with dysfunctional basket cells, it would be possible to augment the activity of these cells and possibly repair brain function. And these tools don't just activate neurons, they can silence them as well. Archirhodopsin and halorhodopsin, for example, are proteins that are sensitive to orange light and produce the opposite effect to channel rhodopsin. When researchers deliver DNA that encodes for one of these molecules into a specific set of cells and shine orange light within the brain, they can turn off just the selected set of cells. By combining these tools, along with others now being developed, researchers will be able to control brain activity with a degree of precision that would have been unimaginable a few years ago. Optogenetics is currently being used in animal models to understand how normal circuits work, but it may also lead to completely new types of prosthetics for treating a wide range of human brain disorders.